Soil and Leisure has actually been in business for about 15 years. Prior to the inception of Toil and Leisure, I had teamed up with both Michael and his father Blass, who were manufacturers for over 20 some odd years. And we specialize in the manufacturing of wovens, so denim related products, uh, heavy products like button up shirts, jackets, and, and the like. wondering if there were any special process for cutting salvage denim. We lay down all the fabrics, but usually, you know, like uh, there's always like a quarter of an inch difference between the layers. So we make sure that one side is straight to be able to cut one uh, leg. And then the other side, we have to, after cutting one side, we have to fix the fabric and arrange it to make it straight. All of them, you know, they call it relay, all the fabrics. So. It's more difficult. It takes yeah. more time, actually. Okay. Do you have any salvaged denim here that we can pull out and look yeah, at? Yeah, sure. Actually, we got like a uh, couple of fabrics. Oh my god, like, that is oh, so yeah. narrow. Oh, oh, what? Yeah. yeah. There were like 40 inches? No, no, no. Oh oh they god. have different ones. Uh -huh. uh, I think this one is at 28 inches. I have never seen so. anything this yeah. narrow. This yeah. Are you going to get like one leg? Because how are you? No, nah, usually on this one, you will get two legs only. So this is a pattern made especially for salvage. So when the marker is made, they gotta make sure that the edge is straight. This one has to, to be right on the edge of the fabric. So this is how we will do it. And as you can see, like it's so narrow, so you only get one leg. Usually it will be like uh, one back and one front. And this is what you would call a red line? Yes, it's the red line of the salvage. Salvage denim is just a, a type of denim based on the size of the looms that actually make roll of denim. So after the cutting is done, we prepare everything to start sewing. Uh, we will start on the caballo machine. Yes. Oh my God. Now this okay. machine is specific to them. Okay, so just for people who don't know what a caballo machine is, can oh, you just describe? That's why I broke the pants oh, so that you can see it. Like uh, whenever you look into the pants, you can see the chain stitch here. Yep. Okay, that's, that's what uh, this machine is for. So this type of sewing. And it's always a double needle? Yeah, always. Or you can put uh, another needle, which could be a triple needle. On there. Triple needle? Yeah, it will, it will have a, an extra stitch in the middle. So this same machine, you know, we, we make jackets too. So again, you will see like all this clean stitching here. Mm -hmm. That's on this machine. Like from uh, all this, the armhole. Side seam. Does it turn it back as it's feeding? Yeah, the yeah. Usually, like uh, they call it fa flat felt too. Okay. So what it does, it does the fabrics like this. You know, the final product is much cleaner, and oh people really love it. Yeah. These are the single needle machines. Yeah, we use them all the time. You know, because every like the pants, every garment has single needle stitching on it. These are the double needle machines. They are set up also for like um, heavy fabric. This machine is to do the hem with uh, chain stitch. Yeah. Oh. Okay, most of the pants they have like regular single needle um, yeah. stitching. Yeah. So this is where we do the hem. And we have the keyhole machine. I was gonna ask. Yeah, <laughs> right here. Yeah. 
what type of button? Yeah, the key yeah we do the keyhole. These are more expensive, so. Yeah, we usually we apply it on the bottom fly and yeah. the waist. Yeah. And let me show you the machine too. Quality for us is absolutely number one, especially in a market where you know, there's a lot of manufacturers and the thing that usually differentiates manufacturers, it comes down to the detail, which is usually the quality. Yeah, when it comes to manufacturing and, and pricing, we tend to land on the higher tier of pricing in the premium market. You know, again, we have a lot of friends who also are manufacturers who are amazing at what they do. You know, some of their prices are less expensive than what we charge. but. It's in my experience and what I've learned in life is that, you know, sometimes you may not get what you pay for, but you're definitely going to pay for what you get. It's super important that both uh, us as a manufacturer, as well as the client, that we really kind of see eye to eye and we have a common, pun intended, a common thread that kind of binds us together so that we can go down this journey together, because that's really what it's about.